The word lightworker is thrown around a lot, but what exactly does it mean? And why should you even care? I don't care! It turns out that lightworkers have a very unique energy that needs special care in order for them to stay healthy, happy, and to fulfill their important life missions on the planet. So if you're a lightworker, you absolutely need to know the crucial information that I share in this video. You're going to learn what a lightworker is, including the three energy quirks that make a lightworker so incredibly powerful. Then we're going to cover the top 10 traits of a light worker, so you can figure out if you're a light worker if you don't already know. And then we're going to cover what light workers must focus on in order to stay happy, healthy, and to fulfill their life missions. Coming up. Hello, beautiful soul. This is Christina Lopes, the Heart Alchemist, here to help you open your heart, heal your past, and live with purpose. If you're new to my videos, click on that subscribe button and also on the bell so you get notified as soon as I publish new content. And don't forget to follow me over on Instagram where I share weekly tips and advice that you won't find here on YouTube. Before we get into the main video, I wanted to let you know that there is a supplemental workbook that accompanies this video. That supplemental workbook has exercises, homework, to help you go deeper on the content that we discuss in this video. I'm going to leave links to that workbook in the description box below so you can download it after watching this video. On to part one of the video, what's a light worker? <laughs> so here's a general definition of what a light worker is, and then we're going to go deeper actually into the definition. So the broadest way to look at a light worker is a light worker is a soul that has incarnated with a specific service mission to the planet. Okay, so in other words, a light worker is a soul that has incarnated to help humanity or the planet in one way or another. Now, one thing that, that kind of characterizes light workers and they sometimes that they focus on and get a little bit lost in is that when light workers figure out, when they feel, when they come into the realization that they're here on the planet to help humanity and to help the planet, a lot of times light workers initially get a little bit confused because they think that their mission is something that they have to do out there. Okay, so whether it's be the CEO of a company, whether it's to start a nonprofit organization, you know, whether it's to be on YouTube or on TV, a lot of times light workers, when they come into the realization that they're here to help, they immediately think that it's something that they have to do out there, that it's something action oriented out in the world. Okay. I want to bust this myth a little bit because it is true that light workers come down with the service mission. And then if you have a service mission, more likely than not, you're going to be acting in the outside world, of course, right? But what I really want to focus on is that there's a deeper understanding of what it means to have a service mission to the planet and that it doesn't always include a lot of action happening on the outside. Okay. So I wanted to kind of leave this little, this little side note here is to just to let you know that yes, light workers are here to help. Yes. Light workers are here for a service mission, but there are important layers and facets to that mission that don't always include action in the outside. All right. So I wanted to leave that before I go a little bit deeper on some of the energy quirks of a light worker. So yes, a light worker comes down to help, but now let's talk about the three aspects or three energy quirks, three aspects of that mission that the light worker has when they incarnate, right? The first one is, uh, and you'll see when I talk about these three aspects, you'll understand what I was talking about when I said that a light worker's mission isn't always having to do with action in the outside. Now you'll understand why by these three energy quirks or energy aspects. The first one is that light workers are transmuters of energy. Okay. So this is so crucial for the light worker mission because the light worker soul incarnates biologically prepared to transmute energy. Transmutation is literally when you take an energy and you shift it into a new higher energy. So in a lot of ways, I could also use the word alchemy. All right. So light workers are here to alchemize. They are incredible energy alchemists. They transmute, they transform energy from one to another, like an alchemist, you know, transforms lead into gold. Okay. So that's the first aspect. The first energy quirk of a light worker is that they are biologically prepared. Your body, if you're a light worker, your body is biologically prepared to transform energy very, very quickly, much more than non light worker. Okay. And it's precisely because this is a part of your mission. <laughs> okay. The transformation of energy is a part of your mission. So that's the first aspect. You have a biological system, a body, a mind, a soul, an energy system that is uniquely prepared to transform energy, to move it from one state to another. 
Now, when it comes to this energy transmutation aspect of a light worker, there are two layers to it because really what's happening for a light worker to be so much, much more powerful than they are in their current state before they start their transmutation of energy, for a light worker to really come into their power, they need to transmute energy within them and then around them. Okay. This is, this is really important. A lot of times light workers get a little bit distracted. They, they want to transmute energy on the outside and they forget that the, that the energy transformation has to occur within. That's, that's so crucial when it comes to the healing and any kind of spirituality, really as within, so without, if you want to create change in the outer world, you've got to create change in the inner world first. Okay. And that's where this comes in the energy transmutation aspect. The light worker gets very, very good and is very, very good at shifting energy within them. And as they shift energy within them, then they're able just by their presence to shift energy around them very easily. The second energy aspect or quirk is housing light. Okay. So the light worker's body is prepared to house more light, a higher percentage of light than a non light worker. Now I just want to leave a little side note here, um, just to, to give this, to, to leave this reminder that when I'm talking about light workers and non light workers, I'm not saying that light workers are better and non light workers are worse as people. Okay. So this isn't a judgment of value. This is just the differences in each person's system. So a light worker system is prepared to house more light, meaning that their cells, you have 40 trillion cells in your body and the cells, the body of a light worker is uniquely prepared and programmed to be able to hold a higher percentage of light in the body than a non light worker. And the reason that the light worker is prepared this way biologically is precisely because of their service mission to the planet. Part of their service mission to the planet is actually shifting the energy on the planet from more density to more light. And in order for them to do that, they have to carry more light within them first, within themselves first. So this housing aspect, this housing light aspect is really important. Another important facet of the mission. And notice these two aspects that I've just talked about, the transmutation of energy and the housing of light has nothing to do with action, right? Like it's just a state of energy that the person works within them to get to this state of being able to transform energy and to house more light. So the first two aspects don't involve a lot of action. All right. So this just to let you know how important the movement and the inner work of the light worker is in order for them to fulfill their mission. The third energy aspect or quirk is helping humanity. So, so now I talked about the first two, which had a lot to do with inner transformation. And now in this third energy, energy quirk. Now we, you see that the light worker is absolutely programmed to help humanity in one way or another. And if you're a light worker, you'll feel this. It, it, it almost feels when you're a light worker, it feels like you have this constant pinging in your heart, just telling you to be of service in one way or another. You have this drive to help that that's a great way of seeing, um, kind of, of seeing it, that the, these words just kind of fell on my head right now. You have a drive to help. And that drive just keeps pinging out of your heart constantly. And it's programmed in you as a light worker, cause that's what you're here to do. But notice this is the third step. And this is the third step precisely because if you don't go through step one and two, if you don't understand that entered those two energy quirks initially, you won't be able to help humanity as much because a huge part of your life mission has to do precisely with the shifting of energy and the housing of more light within you. Then you can help humanity so much much more than you ever could without focusing on those two, those first two energy quirks. Okay. So these are the three energy quirks. When you get to this third one, you're at a place where you've already transmuted a lot of energy. You've already moved a lot of energy. You've already increased your percentage of light in your, in your body. And then when you step forward to help humanity in whatever capacity it may be, you're going to be able to do that with a lot more power and a lot more strength. On to part two of the video, the top traits of a light worker. So there are a lot of them. I'm going to share the top 10 that I have found in my own life, but also in working with a lot of clients. So here are the top 10 in my experience. All right. The first one we kind of already talked about. That's probably the top, uh, the top trait of a light worker is this desire to serve. Okay. This desire to help humanity or to help the planet in one way or another. 
again, this is really programmed in your heart. It This desire just keeps pinging and it keeps driving you forward to assist, to be of service, to help humanity in one way or another. Okay, so that's probably the top trait of a light worker. Uh, the second trait of a light worker is uh, sensitivity. All right, sensitivity. So light workers are generally what's known as sensitives or empaths. Okay, so HSPs, highly sensitive people or empaths. So the reason that light workers are so sensitive is because of this capacity that they have to shift energy from one state to another. They need extremely sensitive energy systems in order for this uh, for this energy shift to occur quickly. They're very fast alchemists, but they need that sensitivity in order for the for the alchemy and for the transmutation of energy to go more quickly. All right, so very very common if you know yourself to be a sensitive person, what's known as a highly sensitive person or an empath, then then this is another uh, key trait of a light worker so you may also be a light worker now if you don't know whether you're a sensitive person or an empath i shot a whole video on that and i'll leave links to that video in the description box below so you can find out more about being an empath what that entails and how you can work with that energy you can watch that video after watching this one the third trait of a light worker is a strong intuitive side so light workers are extremely intuitive meaning that they have a really powerful heart center which is your portal of intuition so they are very highly, highly intuitive, even before they have developed their intuitive uh, abilities or that they've trained themselves to understand their intuition. They are very intuitive, even before being trained. And so again, this intuition is very strong. It's a part of the strength of the energy system of the light worker in order to help them kind of find their life mission and find in what ways they need to be helping humanity. Very, very strong intuitive skills. Sometimes the flip side of that is that there are a lot of light workers that have an over, overly active mind. And so a lot of times their intuitive sides can be drowned out before they know that they're even light workers and that they have strong intuitions, okay? But very, very common, strong intuitive intuitive side. If you are a light worker, you have a really powerful intuition, whether you know it or not. Now, if you want to go deeper into what intuition is and how to work with intuition, I shot a whole video on that and I'll leave the link in the description box below. So you can go into that after watching this video. Trait number four is being an outsider. So a lot of times light workers will come to me and they'll say that they feel totally out of place, not just in this world, but a lot of times they feel like outsiders within their own biological families, within their own families. So a lot of times light workers say that they, they, it seems like they come from a different planet when compared to their family members. This is very, very common. It's very common for this to happen. And the reason why a lot of times light workers feel like outsiders within their own family or circle of, of family or, or circle of friends is because the light worker's soul actually chooses to incarnate in family lines that may not be their soul family. <laughs> and they choose to do that precisely to help in the clearing out of the ancestral wounding in that specific lineage. Again, because light workers are really good at transmuting energy, sometimes they'll choose to incarnate in particular ancestral lines that may be a little bit difficult, that may not be of the same soul family as they are, but they choose to do that as, as part of helping humanity and helping come to clear out lineages and clear out old energy from family lines. So that's why a lot of times they can they feel like they're outsiders in their own biological family because they may not be a part of the same soul family as the biological family uh, that they incarnate into. Okay, so feeling like you're an outsider, but not just within your family. A lot of times light workers will say that they feel like an outsider. They feel so different from everybody else around them, not just their families. Okay. So if you have this feeling like you're an outsider, uh, this could be another sign that you're a light worker. Trait number five that you're a light worker is that you're wise beyond your years. So a lot of times light workers, light workers are very old souls. They're very advanced souls. They've been here many, many times exactly with the same service mission. So they've acquired this really deep wisdom that they don't, that it's not, it's not a wisdom that comes from a college degree or from, uh, from any other kind of like fancy initials after their name. This is a wisdom that comes precisely because they've been 
here many lifetimes doing the same service mission to the planet. And so they have this, this innate, deep wisdom that doesn't come from just regular life experience. So that's very, very common. If, you, if you've ever been told that you're really wise, that, that you always have something uh, really wise to say or something deep to say about a situation, then this is another trait that you're a light worker, a wise, just wisdom, very deep wisdom that has nothing to do with education or, or a college degree or anything like that. The sixth trait of a light worker is that people come to you for advice. <laughs> so I put this one right after the one before because it's because of this wisdom, because you have this innate deep wisdom that's way beyond education or college degrees, people seek you out because they can sense that wisdom in you and they want to tap into that. So a lot of times light workers will find that they're kind of like their friends and their family come to them. They're kind of like counselors. They're the counselors to their family and to their friends and to the people around them. People seek them out a lot uh, for guidance, to counsel them, just to, to, to help them work through things or work Work through challenges that they may have. All right. So this is another important trait. If you find yourself being kind of people coming to you and just asking you for advice, this may be another trait that you're a light worker. Trait number seven is that you go deep within. So this one is also biologically programmed in you. And it's because precisely because you're that transmuter of energy. And so in order for you to transmute energy, you have to go deeper and deeper and deeper within yourself. You have to be the type of person that's not afraid of turning every single stone of your inside environment upside down so you can clear out what needs to be cleared out. This is a key characteristic of a light worker. And this is precisely why you, you, you kind of go within and you go deep because the deeper you go within yourself, the more you transmute energy. And so this is very, very powerfully programmed in you. A lot of times light workers, they, they may be afraid. So sometimes they may be afraid of going a little bit deeper, but they do it anyways. That's a key feature of a light worker. Even when they're afraid of what they're going to see inside of themselves, they still go anyways. <laughs> and this is a very different from a non light worker because a lot of times non light workers, they spend entire lifetimes down here, not wanting to go within because they're afraid of what they're going to see. All right. Not so with the light worker, the light worker is very good at doing what's known as shadow work. All right. So the light worker will just keep going deeper and deeper and deeper. They will keep turning every single stone of their inside environment so that they can clear their, their energy because they have this drive to transmute energy in order to house more light. So this is going to keep calling them to go deeper and deeper. They're very good at shadow work and shadow work literally means that, that they're not afraid of looking at things within themselves that may not be acknowledged or that they may not be seeing. That's what the shadow is. It's just parts of you that are unacknowledged or unseen. And the light worker has no problem going into those parts and bringing light to those parts. All right. Now, if you want to go deeper on what shadow work is, if this is something that's resonating with you, I shot a whole video on shadow work and I'll leave links in the description box below so you can watch after this one. Trait number eight of a light worker is that they have a powerful energy field. Now, if you don't know what an energy field is, here's a picture of it. Your energy field or your aura or electromagnetic field, you can think of it like an egg shape shaped energy field around your body. It looks like an egg. It's made out of light. Um, it's made out of energy, non-physical. It's a, it's a part of your known as the quantum self. Okay. This energy egg shell is known as your energy field and light workers have really powerful energy fields, which is why they are also powerful manifestors. Light workers are really powerful manifestors. And now you can understand a little bit why if a light worker has the mission to come down here and help humanity or the planet in one way or another, they need to have powerful energy fields because they're going to be manifesting a lot of change on the planet. They're going to be helping to manifest a lot of change on the planet. So they need powerful energies. Now, the flip side of this, and a lot of times what I focus on when I'm working with light workers is they have to learn that their energy field is so powerful that they have to be careful what they wish for. <laughs> Cause a lot of times light workers can get into a little bit of trouble in life, especially early on in life when they don't remember that they're a light worker, light workers can get into sticky situations because they end up manifesting things in the outside environment that are really painful for them that are coming from the wounds that they haven't healed within themselves. And because they're such powerful manifestors, 
crap starts to materialize in their outer environment. Then when they learn they're a light worker, they start doing shadow work and they start going within and transmuting all this energy. Then they learn to use the power of manifestation a lot more responsibly and with a lot more power. And so they kind of stop manifesting crappy situations in their lives, but sometimes it takes a while. So very, very powerful, powerful energy systems that they have to learn how to use responsibly. Trait number nine of a light worker is that they are forward driven. So the light worker, although the light worker has no problem going down, going within, transmuting energy, they don't like to dwell on the past. So they, they clear out their baggage. They have no problem revisiting the past in order to clear it and in order to heal what needs to be healed, because that's also programmed within them. But at the same time, they're also very forward focused souls. Okay. So they are constantly looking forward because again, remember they're down here to help humanity, to help make shifts in, in, you know, help humanity be of service and make shifts on the planet. You can't change things down here. If you're looking in your rear view mirror all the time, and if you're dwelling on the past, so light workers are very good at just getting the job done of healing the past, sitting with the past, healing it and letting it go. They're very good at getting that job done, but then constantly with their eyes focused forward on what needs on, on where they're going forward and where humanity is going forward. Right? So very forward driven light workers always have their eyes pointed straight ahead, not in the rear view mirror. And the last trait of a light worker, the 10th trait is that they are growth driven. Okay. So, this one is an important trait because if they weren't growth driven, the light worker wouldn't be able to, to be that big transmuter of energy that he or she is. So they are, they have this little chip inside of them that tells them to keep growing, to keep expanding, to keep moving. <laughs> so they're very growth driven. They, they have no problem throwing themselves into uncomfortable territory. They love to learn new things. They love to, they love to really go into unchartered territory, which a lot of times can be terrifying for non light workers, for light workers. They just throw themselves into the uncertainty of life. They throw themselves into uncharted territory. They thrive in this kind of environment of growth. The light worker also has a little chip inside of them that is really, uh, tells them that they don't like stagnation. <laughs> so the light worker has this little chip inside that is very anti-stagnation, meaning that the light worker understands that a big part of their mission is this transmutation of energy. They're constantly transforming energy. So they understand one of the key, key important alchemy rules. And that is that energy needs to move. They understand this on a biological level, even if they don't know that intellectually energy needs to move. And so the light worker has this little chip inside of them that doesn't really feel comfortable with stagnation. When energy starts to stagnate inside of a light worker, they start to feel real uncomfortable. And it can actually get to a point where if that energy doesn't start moving, a light worker can actually manifest a physical disease disease or a psychological disease because their biological system does not like stagnation of energy at all. So this is kind of an important feature is this, this little chip saying no to stagnation. <laughs> and that's part of why they're so growth driven. They're constantly moving into new territory and into new things. Uh, even if they're afraid, they, they still keep going because they're very, very growth driven. On to part three of the video, what a light worker must focus on. So it's a little bit of a continuation of what I was just talking about in part two. And the key, the key issue that a light worker must focus on is to remember and to circulate energy within themselves. Okay. So they have to remember not to let energy stagnate inside of them. This is so crucial for a light worker because if a light worker allows energy to stagnate within them, like I said before, this can really materialize a lot of painful things in themselves. They can really start feeling like crap. Um, they can start feeling, not only can they start feeling depressed or really low on energy, but eventually if they keep, if the energy stays stagnated within them, they can manifest physical disease and all kinds of things in their lives because their system does not like stagnation. Their system is made to move energy. And so it needs to constantly be moving energy. Light workers are energy circulators. There's another way of looking at light workers. They are energy circulators. So when energy stagnates, that's never good for a light worker. So this is the top key. And now that you know, you're a light worker, if you're still watching this video, you're probably a light worker, right? You've already went through those 10 traits. You know, you're a light worker. 
And now this is what you need to remember in your heart and in your mind that as a light worker, the top thing that I must focus on is to remember that I'm an energy circulator and that energy needs to constantly be moving within me. I cannot let it stagnate. All right. So that's the top thing uh, for light workers to focus on. The, the metaphor that I like using for this is, um, you know, if you've ever heard stories of big factories, you know, like let's say you have a big factory that's been working 24 hours a day for God knows how many years. If a factory were to shut down and all the workers leave and the whole factory shuts down, it wouldn't take very long for all of the machinery to be lost in the factory. Why? Because it starts rusting, the parts stop moving, and this happens very quickly in a factory if it stops, okay? So this image of a factory that's constantly moving, and if it shuts down everything, the parts of the factory start to rust, this is the metaphor that I like to use for, for light workers. They also kind of work like a factory in the sense that their energy is constantly moving, it's constantly circulating, and it's constantly transmuting, and so this needs to continue to happen in one way or another in order for the light worker to feel healthy, to be grounded, and also to fulfill their mission. Okay, so if light workers are energy circulators and if they if they don't like energy to be stagnant, then you know how do you move energy within yourself? You know, I'm going to give you uh, a couple of, of of tips on exactly how to do that, how to keep energy moving within you. It's not anything. It's not rocket science. You could be, you could use very simple things. One of them is to really focus on the transmutation of energy. Okay, so really focus on this aspect that is a part of your energy system, which is you are a transmuter, you're a circulator. So focus on that transmutation of energy, focus on the transformation of energy that comes so naturally to you. One way of doing this is to go within, to never be afraid of doing your shadow work, as we already talked about, never being afraid of going into your inner environment and exploring how you feel, exploring your past and whether you have trauma or pain from the past that needs to be clear and worked through. Just keep going within one layer at a time. Maybe you have inner child work to do. Maybe you have stuff from past lives that needs to be cleared. Just keep going within and doing your inner work of clearing. And that in and of itself is one way to transmute energy that'll keep this energy circulating nicely. Another way to do, to keep the energy circulating is by doing en daily energy clearings. I do this every single day. This is a must, uh, energy clearing is a must in, in a light worker's toolbox because energy can just get blocked, you know, life happens, we have our, you know, our jobs and our careers and our families and just regular life happens and sometimes energy can get a little bit blocked. So energy clearings are extremely important, not to mention that light workers are sensitives or empaths, which means that they could pick up the garbage, the energy garbage around them a lot, so the energy clearing is important, all right? I'm not going to go deep on how to do energy clearing because I shot a whole video on that. So if to if you want to learn how to do the some simple te techniques to do uh, daily energy clearing. I'll leave a link to that video in the description box below so you can watch after this one. The second way to circulate energy is to focus on being of service, okay? So, but this is the second tip, right? So don't forget that. The first tip is the transmutation part, learning how to house more light in you, and then focus on being of service. Once you do that inner, that inner work, once you go within and you start to do that inner work of kind of clearing all the stuff that needs to be cleared, remember that the second part of your mission is being of service to the planet. So take action, take action, use your masculine energy a little bit and take action in your outside environment in ways that are of service to the planet in whatever ways those are for you. For each of us, it's going to be different. We each have different missions as light workers, but just take action, move in the world, go in the direction, not just of your dreams and of your passions, but also move in the direction of being of service to, to other people, of really honing in on what the particularities of your mission as a light worker are and just taking uh, taking a step towards those particularities one day at a time. I'm not going to get deep on on how to connect with your mission as a light worker I sh because I shot a video on that. I actually shot a video on the life mission of the light worker and how you can connect with it. I'll leave links in the description box below so you can watch after this one. Now I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below if you resonate with being a light worker. Are you a light worker after watching this video? Let me know in the comments below. And also don't forget to download. There's also a link 
below to download your supplemental workbook that accompanies this video. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel or head over to my website where you can download my popular free guided meditations. And don't forget the videos that I talked about in this one. That'll be great for you to continue your viewing. All right, beautiful soul. I love you. I'm out.